and welcome. My name is Coach Beth, or Beth Sedlak, and I am a substitute teacher here at Mountain View Elementary, Junior and Senior High School, and I'm also the Junior High Girls Softball Coach for Mountain View. So we are going to talk today about what it is to be a good team and what the importance of being a good team is. It's not just about being a good player, it's about being a good person, and it's about being respectful to your friends that are playing with you and the, even the other team that's playing against you. So stick with me and we're going to go through a couple tips and I hope this makes everybody more excited and willing to work together. Okay everybody, so we're going to our first practice, right? And the first thing we see are people that are all different shapes and sizes on your team. Now, some of them might be taller than you or smaller than you. And some of them may have played before or not played before. But the first thing that we want to try to do is not to judge a book by its cover. Have you guys ever heard that one before? Probably, right? So it means just don't say because a person's smaller doesn't mean that they don't belong on the team. Who knows what they might be able to bring to the team. And then just because somebody's bigger than you, don't always assume that they're gonna be better than you either. You guys need to make sure that you start each practice with an open mind and be kind to one another because you guys are gonna to work together. So I had a couple friends of mine, Macy and Callie Harvatine, and they're gonna show us what not to do and then how to make it right. So take a look. Hey, can I play with you? No, you're too little. <laughs> Whoa. So if you're smaller, you can't play on the team? I don't know. I don't think so. Let's see how we can make this better. All right? Hey, can I play with you? Sure. Breakfast is at three today. Yes! Stop today. Way to go, girls. That's what part of being a team is all about. Just say hey and get started and start practicing and then see what happens. Okay, everybody. So I've got one for you. Now, when you sign up to play, you never really know who's going to be on your team until you get there to that first practice, right? But what if you get to that first practice and you see somebody that you're going to play with that you really don't get along well? And it might be from school or it might be from the neighborhood. It might be anything. But the thing that you have to remember is that when you sign up to play on a team, you guys need to play as a team, not you versus them and you really have to put all of those things aside so again my friends callie and macy are going to show you what i'm talking about let's take a look go are you playing softball this year no because it's stupid my show she always picks on me when i play well that's a bummer oh no we can't have that happen you can't not play just because somebody else that you might not like is going to be on the team. Let's see what we can do to fix it, okay? Go. Okay. Are you playing softball this year? No, because Michelle always picks on me when I play. Well, why don't we go get Coach Beth to fix the problem? Okay, let's go! Great job, girls. Way to try to find a grown-up to help with the problem, rather than start a fight with your teammate. Nobody wants to do that, and especially it sets a bad example for the other players on the team. If you two can't get along, then how is the rest of the team supposed to play together? Way to go. Find a grown up, try to get the situation solved, and then move on and play ball. I have a tough question for you now. What is the most important part about playing a sport? No, it's not winning. Winning is fantastic though. Don't get me wrong. I love to win. That's why we play the games, right? To win? Not all the time, because there are people out there that might not be the best or the fastest, or they're gonna hit the home runs all the time. But you know what they are? They're good sportsmen. And good sportsmanship is, as far as I'm concerned as a coach, the most important quality that I find in players. What is good sportsmanship? Good sportsmanship is making sure that you respect the other people that you play with, that you are courteous to the other people on the other team, that you are polite and take 
the judgments of the referees and the umpires graciously. You know, there are rules to everything. There are rules in school, there are rules at home, there's rules on softball fields and baseball fields, there's rules everywhere. So we need to make sure we follow them. And if something doesn't go your way, and if you disagree with a call or something that an umpire may have said, you don't go and start yelling at them or tell them that they're wrong and you're right. Same thing, if you're on the same team and you are rooting against your teammate or saying nasty things about the people on the other team, that doesn't set a good example for the rest of the players on the team. And a lot of times on teams that I coach, I have girls that are older that have played for a couple years and girls that are just starting out. So you need to make sure that you are leaders. You want to be the one that people follow your example. And let me show you, I have some good examples of those. So again, I'm gonna use some friends of mine. One is, her name is Holly Harvatine, and the other, she happens to belong to me. Her name is Lily Sedlak. So let's take a look at a couple things that they did for us. Oh, look. Nice oh my gosh, phones, phones. They drive me crazy. So what do you think went wrong there? Well, one, they were on their phones when they should have been watching the game, right? And two, one of their teammates got up to bat and they could have cared less. So how could we change this? Well, no phones in the dugout, right? But it's tough to do. But if you've got a teammate that's coming up, what should you be doing for him? Cheering him on, right? All right, let's see if they can fix this first mistake. Hey, look, Macy's up. Go, Macy. Woo! All right, way to go, girls. That was awesome. That's just what we want to see. We want to see players cheering for players. We want to see people working together and cheering each other on. That's a whole part of teamwork and excellent sportsmanship. Way to go. So in order to get to the games, we've got to do what? Practice, right? And I know a lot of people really don't like practice. <laughs> and that's okay. But you know what? You don't get better unless you keep trying to do something over and over again. And once again, that goes for a lot of things that we do. So if there's a subject in school that you're having trouble with, what do you get? You get homework and you have to go over your homework and get it right and hand it in and have the teacher help you and correct it until it gets easier, until you get better at it. But it's the same thing with practice with any sport. You don't just wake up and start hitting home runs or you don't wake up and make a hole in one every time you play golf. You have to work at the game. So being a part of a team, and again, excellent sportsmanship doesn't always just mean how you work in the game. You need to make sure that you are an all around good teammate and player and sportsman. So that means practices. And I know sometimes these sports, you practice a lot. Some people practice every single day if they don't have a game, a couple hours at a time. But it's really important to make sure that you go to all of them. Because if you play on a team sport and they miss you for a practice and say you play a certain position, if you're not used to playing that position, those people aren't used to you either. So it's harder to make the game go smooth and it's a lot easier to make a lot of mistakes. So make sure that you go to your practices. Let me show you. I got another example. I know you're excited. Hang on. Hey Lily, are you going to practice later? Nah, I'm gonna go to the dairy bar and go hang out with friends. Practice is stupid. I'm already good enough anyways. Oh, okay. Practice is stupid. I'm already good enough. Holy cow. That's not what a coach wants to hear. And that's not what your teammates want to hear, right? So let's figure this out. Maybe there's a different approach that she can take. And just like we said, practice is just as important as a game. Because if you don't practice, you can't get better. And if you want to get better, you need to go to practice. They work hand in hand. Hey, Lily, are you going to practice later? Of course I am. We're on the same team and we got to win. Oh, yeah. Way to go, girls. That's what you need, right? 
everybody's got to be excited about different parts of the game. And listen, I know sometimes we don't want to go to practice, especially if we've got long days at school, your parents have been working a lot. You know, it's hard to kind of coordinate those schedules and make sure that everybody gets to where they need to be. But it's so important. If you play a position anywhere on a team, you need to be there because your teammates need to know how to react to you. And it's the same for you. So get used to catching and throwing with your friends. Get used to shooting hoops. Get used to anything, whatever it is that you do, make sure you make time and take the time to practice. It makes you and your team better and stronger and more of a single unit rather than a bunch of different individuals that just wanna play it and they're looking out for themselves. That's not teamwork and that's not sportsmanship. All right, let's see what we have next. So I wanna tell you a quick story about my own personal experience as a kid a long time ago about sportsmanship. I was playing in a golf tournament and there were girls from all around the East Coast that were playing in there. And I had never played in such a big event, but I thought, you know what? I'm pretty good. I can hold my own. No, I played terrible. The first day I shot a million. Well, not a million, but close to it. And then the second day I had to play again and I shot another huge number. So remember in golf, the higher the number, the worse it is. You wanna shoot a low number. So I thought after that second day that I wouldn't have to come back on the third day because they do what's called making a cut. And then the golf professional said to me, oh no, you have to come back. We need you to play in the spots. And I said, okay. So I trudged in after the third day and it was terrible. It was terrible. My feet hurt. I like hit a rock or something. I hit a root of a tree and I did something to my stomach and I pulled muscles. But every time I came in off the course and even though I wanted to scream every single time, anytime somebody asked me how I did, I just said, well, it could have been better. Or I said, I need to go practice. Or I said, not that great, but thanks for asking. So you know what happened? At the end of that tournament, after they awarded all the people that actually won, they did an award for a sportsmanship award that they had never given out before. It was the first time they were ever gonna do it. And guess who won it? Me! And you know what? I felt like a million bucks because I thought that meant more to me well, probably not as much as winning, but the fact that people recognize the point where I used a lot of self-control and I tried my hardest to just understand, listen, I wasn't gonna make my living at that point as a professional golfer. I was a kid, I was playing a sport and I tried to do my best. And you know what? I certainly didn't do my best those three days. But you know what happened? The last year I ever went back to play in that golf tournament, I came in third. It was really cool. So everybody remembers you for your actions. It's just like anything in school. If you have a bad day and you go crazy and throw desks or throw pencils or yell at teachers or students or friends or whatever it is, guess what? People remember that stuff. And it's the same thing with sports. If you lose your temper and you kind of go a little crazy, it's not gonna work out well for you in the end. So just try to keep your cool and try to be as good of a sport as you can. All right, so let's talk about the thing that everybody wants. Winning, now it's winning, right? So again, talking about being a good team player and good sportsmanship, goes hand in hand with being a good winner. So you can't be a bad winner. And what does that mean? You say, Coach Beth, what's a bad winner? Well, a bad winner is somebody that kind of likes to rub it in when they win. You know, I mean, you know, it's sometimes like when you're playing with your siblings, your brother or your sister or your cousins or, 
or friends at school and if you're playing a, a game just a simple board game and somebody wins and they make a big deal about it right or on the other hand if somebody loses and they make a big deal about it oh my gosh I don't know what's worse we've heard of sore losers before and right so a sore loser is what is somebody that that loses the game yeah you guys played by the rules but they lost and then what do they do I can't believe it this is not fair I deserve to win you guys cheated you are the worst I'm never playing again I quit you guys see you later I'm done I don't want to do this anymore you guys stink anybody know anybody like that I think we all have had people like that play games with us in sports. So we want to completely avoid that. Remember, no sore losers. Playing sports and playing games, winning and losing, it's all a part of it. And you know what? The sooner you learn how to deal with it and the better you can cope with it, the better person you're going to be and the easier it's going to be for you to continue to get better and better. You've got to let those things go. It's not the end of the world. It might feel like it at that certain point, but if you lost the game, you go over, you shake hands, and you say good game, right? Now, how about those sore winners or those lousy winners? Well, I've got an example of those. Hang on. want to hang out with me that looked terrible right who wants to play against that person if that's what you're gonna to have to hear after you lose who wants to be that kind of a winner not me not me I'll tell you what I've straightened myself out so I'm gonna show you how to really do it okay it's okay we'll try again next time hey that was a great game you guys played really well played good and hard Give me an elbow. Nice job. Whew. Thank goodness I straightened myself out. Holy guacamole. Remember that from last week? I wouldn't be able to go back on the field. So see the difference? Even if you lose, you need to be what's called gracious. And when you win, you need to be even more gracious. Meaning, you know what? Think about the other person's feelings. Don't just think about you. Winning is great, like we said, but when you lose, and especially if it was a close game and you guys played hard, nobody wants the winning team to come over and make them feel worse. So always try to think about other people instead of yourself. That's what part of being a team is about. It's not about one individual's great accomplishments. It's about what you do as a team. Because you know what? You don't get good as a player without the other people being around you, without the other people supporting you. And you don't wanna be the only person on your team that doesn't get included in celebrations. Because if you are thinking about yourself, trust me, nobody's thinking about you. So you need to make sure that when you play a game you sign up for, you need to make sure that you're gonna commit to the coach, you're gonna commit to your friends, you're gonna become one group, and you're gonna have a good time doing it. All right, good deal. All right, everybody. I have been standing here and talking to you all about what you need to do to make sure that you are a good teammate a good sportsman and what it takes to make a good all-around team but you know who else has a responsibility to the team coaches all right we need to make sure that just the same rules that we are asking you guys to follow that we follow them too so that we aren't yelling and screaming and getting upset well sometimes it's okay to get upset 
It's just not okay to throw a fit, right? So as a coach, I need to make sure that every year I learn a little bit more. And every year I try to get a little bit better too. So just like we're asking you guys to go to practice, we practice too. We practice drills. We read up on different things over the winter time, at least for spring and summer sports. There's all kinds of changes that happen with rules throughout the year in all sports all around the world. So if you're gonna be a coach, you need to make sure that you remember these things. And the other thing is too, I'm not gonna lose my temper around you guys because that would look terrible. One, nobody wants to see me jumping up and down and screaming and yelling, all right? Well, maybe a couple people might think it's funny, but most people would think it really looks terrible. And you know what? I have to agree with them. Nobody wants to see that. And I'm asking you guys not to do it, so why should I be able to get away with it? So you guys need to make sure that you all remind your coaches if they start to get a little out of hand, that it's gonna be okay. That you are there because you wanna play and you wanna have a good time. Of course you wanna learn and of course you wanna get better. So if there's something that you think might be able to help your coach and your team, don't be afraid to stand up and ask them because sometimes you guys might have the best ideas that we don't even think about. Maybe a different throwing drill or a batting drill or a running something, anything, because if you've got a coach that's open to new ideas, then that coach is gonna wanna hear your ideas. So just make sure that everybody around you, your friends, your teammates, and your coach are all working together as a team and working together to promote good sportsmanship. All right? Thanks everybody. Have a great summer and get outside. Go play some catch. Think fast.